have time for one more of our business owners to ask a question. Hi, my name is Jim Worthington. I'm the owner of the Newtown Athletic Club in Newtown, Bucks County, Pennsylvania, a 25-acre lifestyle center. I'm also co-chair of URSA, the largest trade organization for fitness, the fitness industry, and an advocate through my uh, business of the Right to Try Bill. So after all that, I'd like to ask both of you, what are the experiences that you've had that you'd like to share in your business careers and some of the do's and don'ts or lessons you learned that would be beneficial to us today? Thank you. Well, I, I think every entrepreneur goes into business knowing they're taking a risk. So you have to manage that downside risk. But I can tell you one of the ups and downs that I've had. I've been bankrupt. Um, my house was auctioned off in our neighborhood and my car repossessed in the driveway. Seven months pregnant with our second child. So when I talk to entrepreneurs that have had failing businesses or had a bad time, uh, some of them refer to it as a bad patch because they're determined to come back. So I think one of the most inspirational things to me is to listen to entrepreneurs and how they get through the tough times. Because I've often said it's not it's not how you fall, but it's how you get back up. I've had um, an interesting experience in that I both am an entrepreneur and having started my own business, um, but also worked within the context of a family business that was highly entrepreneurial. So I've, I've had both, um, working within a large family business, having started my own small business and ultimately grew it to be a rather large business. But, um, you know, I think for me, one of the um, real challenges was, was managing um, the competing demands of, of raising a family and running a business and working within a family business. And, uh, and then politics got layered on top of all of that. <laughs> and then I got pregnant with my third child in the midst of all of that. And um, you know, one of the things I will say, there's no, there's no right answer and people ask about balance a lot and, and I'm always sort of dismissive of it because I don't think you can plan for balance. You can strategically structure your schedule to avoid work travel, um, and then coming home and having an event where you have to be out. And so you can manage things like that. But we all know that we're one kid's illness away from losing all balance. You know, there's, there's no way you can plan for certain things. And, and I have found that every time I think a challenge is, um, is large and will be hard for me to overcome that's been put in my path or anyone else that I've met with that has been successful, if you grind through it, you get through it, you look back in retrospect and it feels much more manageable than it was in the moment. So, you know, this sort of perspective and, and staying in the moment and um, keeping a laser focus on what your priorities are. So I tell people not to architect their life for balance, but architect their life in a way that's aligned with what their priorities are and constantly measure yourself against your priorities and try to ensure that you were where you needed to be over the long term and, uh, and give yourself a little slack in, in, in the short term. But you know, I will say as an administration, we're um, very focused on, on thinking about how we empower the American working family and how we empower not only business owners and entrepreneurs, but how we enable people to, um, to achieve a manageable um, balance through policies around making childcare more affordable and accessible, um, advocating strongly for um, paid family leave um, to, to support the reality of the dual income modern working family. So, so thinking through, through policies that, that can support the family, I think, is informed by what I have seen and, and what, what I have witnessed as, as an entrepreneur. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much for all your questions. This is me.